the new Parkway Theater, where good food, diverse entertainment, and community create a place for everyone. For showtimes and special events, check out www.thenewparkway.com. You are listening to High School 5.0, where real talk is our vernacular. Just wait for these basketball games to be on, and it's just going to be all Amazon ads. And Amazon, like, probably quick links within watching it that, like, some good's happening. They're going to, like, you know, flood them with certain things. It's going to be, like, a happy impulse buys. The right. worst part about Amazon having it, Amazon does a shitty job with the football games on Thursday night. I wanted the NBA to just sell to someone else. I was like, Amazon does a shitty job. Their sound is all shitty. They're Your trying screen. to be different. I don't mind. The stream came in fine on mine. Oh, not on mine, man. The stream came in fine. My biggest issue is the sound. Like, you don't get the field sounds. They have the announcers turned up too high. Man, I thought I was watching Tecmo Ball. Pedro, your service is shoddy because you live in the devil's butthole. It's always hot out there. That'd be fucking up. uh, That could be a new sexy red lip gloss flavor. (laughs) Devil's butthole. I was thinking about, I was going to call you too, because uh, as I was uh, picking out one of my last water bones for the season, because I feel like it's starting to get bad. Um, I, I had a good one recently. I'm, I'm worried. I haven't bought one in a week, though, so I'm worried. <laughs> so, you know, people tend to have conversations around the watermelon trough as you're picking out watermelons. Everybody has, yeah. their, comp- everybody has their own method. Like, that's why yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody has their own shit. Some guy was there picking out a watermelon, too. He's like, I can't wait to get this. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for a while, cut it open, knead it. And I was like, I've never thought about putting a whole, I don't know where the space would be in my refrigerator to put a whole watermelon in there <laughs> <laughs> to, to put it in the fridge and then cut it when I'm ready you, to eat you it. Do <laughs> you do need real estate. You do need real estate. Yeah. yeah. He put a whole watermelon in the fridge and then cut it later? Yeah. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, man, I just put the whole thing in there. I just, yeah, I just go take this open in the fridge and I'll cut this open later. And I was like, like, how big is your hey, fridge? It makes at a that, difference, man. Point, cold water, when you time, cut it, it's already cold. You ain't got to put it in. It's, I don't mind some room temperature watermelon, but cold watermelon. I mean, he, he's the type that cut it in fours and eat it straight out the rind. That's the type he is. People nowadays say they call him the unapologetic watermelon eater. I call him the uncivilized watermelon eater. I'm good at this. Like, we, we've grown up. I know black people, look, I don't eat watermelon with the fork and cut up because I'm ashamed. No, I'll take it anywhere I go. I take it on the plane. I, I cut it up because it's civilized now. We ain't got to have the shit dripping over our clothes. And, and, and it's not like you, you trying to be discreet of your roots. You ain't trying to uh, hop around and be like, yes, yeah, I got my watermelon no, here. I'll, I'm I'll, on eat the my watermelon. <laughs> I'll eat my watermelon in front of anybody. Excuse like the I, juice. My whole thing is I that I don't want to be... a napkin in the you, handkerchief. You know how you have to f- be leaning over and shit, fucking up bad posture in your back, trying to eat watermelon, keep the juice from dripping on your clothes? That's yeah. civilized watermelon eaters. Aaron, you should just have a watermelon smock you put on. <laughs> nope, don't need that. It's cut up. I think, they, I think you get one on TV. <laughs> yeah, get you a watermelon smock. We might, you know what? That might be something we could sell y'all, make some money off that. Shout out sponsorship yeah. to that. Yeah, but I was more concerned that he had nothing in his fridge and he only ate watermelon. Like that, was, That's what I'm worried about, man. Well, yeah. you know, no, when I get a watermelon, usually my, my mom and I put it in the fridge. So, you know, maybe, maybe it was the Asian. <laughs> Is it a small watermelon, Jared? Because, like, I'm sure no, he, we, he we in North big Carolina looking at them big ass watermelon. We get some. Were they even seedless brand or were they the seeds? No, they're they're seeded and they're pretty. And pretty the seeds are the seeds are yeah, huge. The one I got was like maybe 15, maybe. Yeah, well, I don't know. I ain't bought a watermelon under 15 pounds in a while. <laughs> I think I bought a 12. That's been my smallest this season. Yeah. Uh, now, we buy decent-sized watermelons. We don't try and buy the biggest ones, but we try to buy decent-sized ones, you know, oblong ones. What we do is uh, cut half of it, eat half of it after it's been in the fridge, so you get the cold, fresh watermelon, and then we just put saran wrap or plastic wrap over the other half and, you know, keep it in there for, like a, for the next day and then cut that one up or... Two days later. So no, man, I cut now. that up. I need that shit to be cold. Plus, you also need to cut it up because you need to know if it's bad because that way you know how much how much time and effort to put into it, right? I don't want it to wait my time, get it cold, and be looking forward to it. Then I got a bad watermelon. I got to cut it up. 
And then as I'm eating it, I realize, damn, this ain't a good watermelon, right? As I'm cutting it up and eating some of it and putting it in the fridge, then I know the next morning I'm going straight to the store to buy another watermelon. <laughs> Am I the only one aroused right now? I treat my watermelon like pimps in the back in the day treated they, they hoes. And she want to fuck with me, well, then she going to fuck with some pimpin'. Having one watermelon too close to having zero watermelons. You'll see me, hey, I might, hey, go watermelon shopper, I might, I might iron my clothes and then hop in the car. Get my nails done and then go get a watermelon. Aaron dressed go buy watermelon like he's going to church. Yeah. <laughs> dressed up, got a hat on. His Sunday best to go buy one watermelon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put the watermelon in the back seat. Everybody else got to walk. No, he do have he do have a special watermelon bag, so like, I've seen that in action <laughs> in Brandon, real life. Brandon's been with me when we go to farmer market, and I got I got a backpack for a watermelon and a bag for a watermelon. I've seen you carry a watermelon in the backpack all day one time, so it's the I'm not yes. surprised. I carried a watermelon backpack and walked the lake with Brandon. See, now you found yourself a nigga. Remember, Brandon? I had two watermelons that day, one in my backpack, one in a bag, and I we walked the lake with Ed. Aaron doesn't just enjoy watermelon for his sweet nectars. He also utilizes it as a uh, complimentary tool to his uh, staying in shape. I wonder if my man still in slinging his, his watermelon. Right. I gotta go back over there. People got camel packs, man. He got... Mm -hmm. I got watermelon camel pack. You're right about that, man. I almost took my watermelon on the plane. After I cut one up the day before I went to Hawaii. I almost took it on the plane, but then I realized, like, when you get out there, they're going to be checking for fruits and shit. So I was like, nah, I can't take it. <laughs> I'll just have it in, some in the freezer and some in the fridge for when I get back. <laughs> so imagine you have security <laughs> trying to finish off this watermelon before you go through custody. Exactly. <laughs> and I just take a whole watermelon and be like, it's my emotional support watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> Start arguing it, man. If there's an empty seat on the plane, I, I'm putting it next to me <laughs> with the seatbelt on. He's get on a Southwest flight, just put it in the middle seat, but it's in my seat. These are our seats. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, he must be saving that seat for somebody. Nope. Yeah, That's my 22-pound watermelon going with me. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. Well, y'all ready to start the show? Yeah. Let's keep it to down to <clears throat> about an hour and a half, so put a timer on. This I motherfucker, mean, this motherfucker coming in late and then putting on times on shit. Man, ain't yeah. that a bitch? Man, yeah, you. man. Let's keep it. Let's keep the time to this time. I'm, I'm an hour and 20, 10 minutes late. But yeah, I got a, I got a double shift to do. Hey, man, that's the, that's the energy we need for Pedro. Today. That's what we need. Pedro, back at work. You need one. You need one of my clear green visors. You need tax man. You need auditor. Yeah. <laughs> Pedro Hall and Casino Dominoes. <laughs> All right, well, uh, calm down. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to the High Score 510 podcast. You can catch us at High Score 510 on the Instagram, the YouTube, and on the Twitter at Horcrux Hipster. Also, check out our TikTok page at the High Score 510 and our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash High Score 510. And we are here with uh, this is AG3. Coming at you faster than pumpkin season's coming upon us. It is pumpkin spice season, my friends. I, I don't know how. We st we ain't even in September yet. The last couple of years, you guys have been giving me some big pushback, and it always happens at the end of August. Watermelon season ain't officially over. They can overlap. They're not they're, supposed to overlap. They're both they're both uh, their own special wonders of the world. Here's a sound bite, Aaron. Yeah, let me hear this shit. I ain't never told nobody this. But I put on a wig one time, right? <laughs> Yo. And so when I put on the wig, because I was trying to get into this other character, so I put on the wig, I looked in the mirror, and I went, oh, my God. And I was attracted to me. Yo. So I took the Ray wig off is real a fast. Key. And I went, what just happened? He was in character. I didn't know what happened, but I was it's like, true, it because I had it on, and I went like that because it was in my it was in my um eye. So I went like that, and I took it off because I was attracted to me, yo. And, and I love me, but I didn't know I loved me like that. <laughs> I'm gonna get a shitty ass sound bite like that. That's First sick. of all, this is, uh, how you gonna be attracted to yourself when you got permanent five o'clock shadow? <laughs> so all it took was a wig. Hey man, he was, all he, was, he, he flew over Turkey early. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Is he on the Candace Owens show? Uh, I think so. Uh, yeah, perhaps. you know what, that was Ray J that. talking about how he had some irregular feelings about himself in drag. Yeah. Jerry, you need to stop saying that the Kardash he needs to the Kardashians help him stay stay in the picture so they could be relevant. He been irrelevant for the last fifteen years. 
No, Kardashian no. making all this money and he got to go on the Candace Owens show. He's one of the Infinity Stones, Aaron. <laughs> he ain't Infinity shit. Infinity Stones still retain their power. <laughs> no, he he's what you thought was Infinity Stone. If he was Infinity Stone, Thanos would snap his finger and the glove would fall apart. The glove would turn his hand green. It'll turn us to some some uh what is this glasses that, that shift the Ray, the, no the, Raycons. The Raycon, the Raycon, Raycon earbuds glasses. that don't work. They're turning the glove turn to a Raycon. Uh, Raycon. Those things <laughs> suck, man. <laughs> never, never. The only thing I hate in the world is you know when you're talking to someone Raycons because you can't hear shit they saying, but you can hear everything around them. <laughs> you can't hear them, but you can hear a hummingbird. You can hear bells. Does Rayon have a shout out to Ski Lee? Does he have Raycons? No, Ski Lee ain't going that far. Maybe the one person I know got Raycons was Duck. <laughs> and man, I told him stop. His wife told him stop wearing those things. <laughs> she was like, don't talk to me if you're going to have those on. Horrible. And we are here with. Well, uh, where, who am I? Yeah. Uh, who am I? I? When I, when I put on a wig, picture. when I put on a wig, I looked at myself. I was like, shit, I see why these hoes don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Pete Funk. Coming to you from Phoenix. Uh, I'm coming at you faster than this double shift and this vacation coming up. Here's your sound by Pedro. Compliments are our friend JD Manning commenting on the Democratic National Convention. Hammerback Ain't Black Harris now stands at the potential of being the first woman and the first black president because Obama wasn't black. I mean, these uh, Hillary Clinton, well, she's not in her grave right now. But Shirley Chisholm, Barbara Jordan, Coretta Scott King, Margaret Thatcher, Golda Meir, they must be turning over in their graves and say, what on earth are y'all doing? Y'all going to put her? Y'all going to put her? When there are so many women to going to choose a woman, and that's the one y'all have chosen? It shows you the depravity. You know, it's very easy for those who have the liberal understanding and the progressive issue by mindset to see that Donald Trump is a psychopath. Well, hell, Kamala Harris is one too, if not worse. <laughs> wow. One of one. Wow. One of one, but like so many. I don't know. <laughs> He just the, the way he says things though. He knows how to deliver a line. Yeah. Huh. Huh? He does know how to deliver a line. Yeah. <laughs> it comes from that preaching in the pulpit. And we are here with Oh hey, this is Brandon, aka Taco Pablo. Happy to be back on the show. Oh uh, yeah, man. I'm I'm re- I think I'm ready for pumpkin spice season. It's <laughs> snuck up on me, but I'm ready for it. Well, glad TP. Well, uh, here's a soundbite, Brandon. I love you. I love you beyond all limit. (laughs) With all my strength. With all my heart, I love you. I was supposed to be the toughest, strong, and you done carried me so, 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 so many nights. I love you. Through the fire. (laughs) <laughs> Shut up. Hey, we're that a little bit. Pedro laughed at the one at the best time. That's funny. Pedro couldn't Through hold it long enough. Through the fire. 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 Oh, oh, man. Man. So <laughs> just me though, because I feel I like love how this man be putting it on. Now she's fine. Now don't get me wrong. Make good one of the finest women walking this earth. I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what this is. This is actor on actor sexuality. <laughs> she one of the finest women walking this earth. Now I will say she she took a while to uh, to look of age though. Like, she definitely <laughs> took her time. Like oh, I, she, I mean, I, she was I'm, she was 16 for 15. I'm not talking about when she was in Eve's Bayou. I'm talking about like the Megan Good after she was in that shitty ass movie with Tyrese. <laughs> She was in Daywatch with uh, Jamie Foxx. I ain't talking about none of those movies. I'm talking about the adult Megan Good. I'm talking about Megan Good right now. That's what I'm talking about. Now, is this just me? When I see somebody who looks that way, she's obviously a very attractive woman, and I see her with him, I immediately think, 
we need to look at her past and how has she been abused. Oh no, her past is her past is pretty. It, it, it's long and distinguished. <laughs> Jamie Fox, uh Thomas Jones, the running back. Um uh I think maybe common, I'm not sure. Um <laughs> Uh, it's pretty long. Tyrese, Tyrese, um, George, uh, what's that? Gordon Levitt, Jason Gordon Levitt. Yep, she was with him at one point. I mean, it's distinguished, Brandon. That's why you can't be surprised, according to you know. Well, shout out to Jonathan Majors, uh, through the fire, professing his love for Megan Good. Yeah, that shock of Con- Do you think he was singing the Kanye version of Shock of Knowing him, knowing him, probably some version worse than that. <laughs> you probably seeing him the Coretta Scott King version. <laughs> oh my God, he's always putting on that damn waterfall show every time he shows up. <laughs> you put it on too when you fucked up that Disney money. Yeah, he's breaking up fights in alleys. And, Come on, uh, man. That, that, was, that, that looks staged as hell, dude. And waterworks. So he's showing up in some alley around a bunch of Latinas. <laughs> that's what I man. That's what I said. This is actor on actor sexuality right there. Both of them need a career. So they putting on a show everywhere, any, any place they can, their, their emotions and their drama is going to be show. Mm-hmm. Which I, I, I'm kind of like, do Disney, uh, you went a little too far. Um, I think that was one of my cutting corner shout outs anyways. They went too far by uh firing that man. Yeah, they it was they, too too drastic. I was like, shoot, man. He all all it was was a misdemeanor shit. Y'all one of y'all gonna get one of these Disney characters gonna get caught doing cocaine here pretty soon. You can almost gonna be caught doing cocaine here. with Michael Jordan's son. Exactly. Doing bumps in the middle of France. And uh, other news, Marcus Jordan was doing <laughs> cocaine at brunch. That brunch, that's where he was sitting at brunch. That's the crazy thing about it. That nigga was doing bumps like uh, he was a drug lord in Columbia. He was doing bumps like that uh, dude in, in Predator 2. Uh-huh. Exactly. El, El Scorpio. What? 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 <laughs> Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> Kobe! Michael B. Jordan is auditioning. For Marcus Jordan, Bobic. <laughs> in the movie, it portrays Jordan going in Paris and buying drugs from a drug dealer. Uh, what would Michael B. Jordan do? In the audition, this first thing you'll say, I can't believe my career come down to this. <laughs> this is this is lower than when I was playing Wallace and I got shot in that dirty ass projects in Baltimore. This is lower. You know why it's low? Not because I'm buying drugs in the movie, because I got to play Marcus Jordan's son. Talk about a guy that's done nothing but just be born, just be the sperm that rolled out of down Michael Jordan's leg and into Juanita Jordan. How in the hell I'm playing this yeah. guy? I'm better off playing Jerry Sanders. <laughs> At least Jerry Sanders, I get to laugh, keep my hair curly, go hiking, wear a bunch of wear a bunch of clothes from REI. And then, you know, show up and then say, I'm going to take this podcast off of Darius' hands. These are slaves. <laughs> They're all slaves. <laughs> they ever make a biopic about Marcus Jordan. <laughs> I will burn down three AMC three theaters. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they're not planning, you burn them down. <laughs> three of them got to go. Like, man, we got too many movie theaters, too many movies coming out right now. You break a biopic about Marcus Jordan. <laughs> And my name is Jared, a.k.a. DJ Art, with two T's for a double dose of that tink tink. The D is silent, so it's just Jart. There could be a slight chance I might be pregnant now. Really? And why do you say that? I've been craving weird things that I'm not... Normally craving? Yeah. And now you crave it. Hmm. Like water. Well, some of it I'm could be... water. <laughs> craving what? This is disgusting. Jerry, what the hell are you watching, man? Bitch, you ain't pregnant. You're thirsty. <laughs> craving things that I ain't never been craving, like water. That's dope. That is amazing. Uh, <laughs> I, I love everything about that, Jerry. In uh, Tyrese news, 
Unofficial <laughs> sponsor of the show, by the way. Unofficial sponsor. Brought to you by uh, Dude Wipes. <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> Tyrese news this week. He was on with, uh, what's the name? Uh, 100, 100 million, 100,000 K uh, worth of game show. <laughs> yeah, a million dollars worth of game. A million dollars worth of game show. Uh, he had this to say. My mama made us go to a social security building and play retarded. <laughs> You get that seven hundred and eighty dollars, straight up government cheese, nigga. <laughs> nigga, you been acting. <laughs> that was, that was my first acting gig. Your mom was your first director. She gave you your first movie gig. Your mom, first director. Ah, ah, <laughs> ah, 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 that was my first motherfucker acting gig. Yeah. That was your first acting gig. Hey man. <laughs> my question is, who paying them to act that way now? <laughs> You got stuck in no. character. <laughs> no, I will. Say, I noticed that Wallow didn't make a joke until he knew Tyrese was okay with it. Because that's the kind of joke you make when you know the dude ain't trying to fight you. Because you can't be like, "Oh man, your mama made you look retarded." My mama made us go to a Social Security building and play retarded. <laughs> yeah, see, I think his his ex wife is making him play that now. I'm at thirteen thousand dollars a month. What more do you want from me? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Anyways, uh, sorry, Brett. I didn't mean to cut you off. Man. Oh no, I'm just saying. Well, there's a couple things because, like, uh, you know, you don't have to take your kids down to the social security office. That has never been a thing. Like, people just like that's just mom following through, just trying to be like, all right, we gotta bring you down. <laughs> yeah, God, like, crazy. So, so nobody send an auditor or some shit like that later. Well, uh, shout out to Tyrese for uh, blessing us with that gem. And uh, you guys gonna watch his new movie about the. Uh, uh, L.A. Riots. Got another movie coming out, man. He has a new movie coming out. L.A. Riots. 1992, bro. Man, if it ain't starring Pedro's house, they got blocked by that truck. Yeah, that's not no real. That's you, that's not a real thing. I don't know why they didn't come for me to for a part. <laughs> Pedro <laughs> couldn't get in his house because the original. I couldn't, I couldn't get in my house because the uh, that that damn truck was that on damn fire. Reg, Reginald Denny. People don't know. Pedro lived on the corner of Florence and Western. Reginald Denny, was that behind. the white dude that got beat up? Yeah, yeah. it was right by Pedro. You can see Pe Pedro front door right there. <laughs> you can see Pedro chasing him. <laughs> Come on. That's hilarious. <laughs> no, but that's the crazy thing, because we were wondering where Pedro was at. My family, we was trying to find out. They were like, man, make sure Pedro. We didn't have no idea until we found out. Pedro called us from Chill House. Yep. I was like, I'm good. And I was like, thank you, man. My family over here worried. Yep, I, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, we was worried for Pedro. And then we were worried. Here's my, dad, the my dad always passed Pedro house to come home, and his yeah. ass was running late. Yeah. Well, uh, shout out to Tyrese. I can't wait to see you in this movie. Uh, yeah. You won't be buying that one. <laughs> you you, you going to see this movie? <laughs> That's what I was, you going to see it on? Because I, <laughs> unless that shit already played on TV when I turn it on, I don't know how. <laughs> I, I doubt I put it on my own screen. <laughs> Unless they play that shit in the background of some bar, I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't a hotsy tossy type movie, Brandon. <laughs> in news this week, in news, sexy red. <laughs> you saw sexy red. It said, "I'm trying to go to Hollywood." Uh, unveiled her new lip gloss line this week. Last week. And uh, it has some diverse names. <laughs> One is called Booty Hole Brown. <laughs> See, that's not it. That's not it. That's not. What's another one called, Jerry? <laughs> Go ahead and say it. Get it out the way now, Jerry. Because that's not even creative. Booty Hole Brown is a different type of a different hue of brown, Brandon. <laughs> That's not even creative. Well, I'm like, just saying, you know aren't, aren't all booty holes brown? Uh, one is called That's Pussy oh, Hole Oh, pain. my God. <laughs> cool one is called <laughs> Save <laughs> that best one for last. The last one, save that for last, Jerry. Y'all think I'm outrageous. Blue <laughs> Balls is outrageous. Gonorrhea. Yellow Discharge. <laughs> Yellow Discharge is disgusting. Uh, nut. One is called Nut. And the final one. It's a very deep blush color. <laughs> Sex on my period. <laughs> this ain't even creative. Like when when Home Dude came out in Boomerang, and he said, uh, "What was it called?" After Bus. That was creative. That was funny and creative. 
This is just just trying to get attention. And it's fruit scented. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> I want that fruit scented pussy hole pink. <laughs> Can I get that? What does gonorrhea smell like? <laughs> I'm, I might have to go sit next to uh, your boy at Atala, Atala Church, man, J.D. Manning. What would you do if you found out mom. somebody in your family was using some of these products? Would you would you disown them? Would you would you keep it rolling, or would you just you know just uh, give my high five for for for, for doing it? What, what would you be your reaction? I try to get them signed up for this Patreon of ours because apparently they got extra money. Yeah, they just like <laughs> wasting money too. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. They like wasting money. Whoever this is, but everyone wants blue balls. They gotta get the blue balls. It's probably blueberry or a blue raspberry scented. <laughs> this is one just called nuts. I just <laughs> well, I would just want to be in the creative meeting. Like so. What what's the set we're going for here? Exactly. But. Coochie juice. I I think if they could have used booty sweat. Man, I'm thirsty. Might as well have some of this booty sweat I got back in Danang. You know what I'm saying? If they could have used booty sweat, that, that was more work. creative. This is not creative. <laughs> hey, drink booty, booty sweat, baby. baby. <laughs> this is basically taking the words that you know you can't say in school or church. Like, okay, we, we're we not supposed to say damn in either one, but we could get away with it at school or church. But choose some words that we can't get away with in those places. Oh, let's go. Uh, let's go nut. Uh, <laughs> uh, sex on my period. All the things that will just get you kicked out of both places. <laughs> There's some bars that that would get you kicked out if you say these things too loud. I don't know, man. I feel like, no, nah, man, we, we millennials, man. That might be the name of a drink at, at a bar at the right time. That yeah, might yeah. be the name of the bar. It'd be a very specific type of bar, though. It had some of these names like, uh, you know, Coochie Juice, Pussy Hole Pink, Pussy Hole. What pink. is it that she do? I, I'm still trying to figure that out. What do she do? The sexy rat chick? She's a she's a, a can rapper. Yeah, she's a she's, she's, she's a rap. She's a rapper. She's they a, let anybody uh, rap these days. Ain't yeah, it? she's a TikTok. Is this the same as the rapper that that rob people? And they, we always say, oh, he's a rapper. No, no, no. She's actually, you know, she's been around for a while now. She's making a name. She's sustaining. And this oh. is one of her business ventures to continue to s sustain. Like, you know how the news, they say former like Miami football player shoots up place and he realized yeah. he was there for half a semester, never matriculated. Uh, that's didn't what play she game. is to rap. That is what she is to rap. All right. That's all I need to know, Brandon. Because <laughs> she got a blue check mark. All I know about her is she that she Drake. Was Sugar, on her songs. Sugar Free put her in the line on one of his songs, but it, it didn't sound like he was saying she was great or anything. Uh, should we listen to the tracks? <laughs> not her tracks. No, I'd rather listen. You want to play Sugar Free track? Fine, but not hers. Uh, all right. All right. Um, Yellow Discharge is one of the names. That's his sound. Like. Yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot going on well, there. She is a free clinic. She's a free clinic of rappers, right? She's she sounds like the free clinic ain't gonna be enough. You'd be like, "Oh, I just left the free clinic. I'm good." No, I need you to go to a real hospital. <laughs> After you naming all your shit, this yellow discharge, all this, this is, you need to go to a real hospital. Is, I need her to go to one of the hospitals with the good Jewish names. I'm not gonna say what race, what people, uh, doctor, and what hospital, and what media went to. We know I can't say that. It was a Jewish doctor. <laughs> He's stupid. In uh, in news, in some sports news, the big three, Ice Cube, yeah, yeah, yeah. challenged the gold medalist Netherlands three on three team to a game to see who had the better three on three players, especially after the U.S. played so damn poorly. Anyways, unfortunately, because there was not the adequate three period, the game was not to be held. What do you guys think about the big three at some point getting a game against the gold medalist three on three team? I don't think it's gonna happen. Ice Cube was reaching. Any ass like that, you know how to lonely act, off the cognac. He's trying to be relevant. He's trying to get his league to be relevant. He's, he's fighting these owners. The owners are keeping him at bay. Uh, they got him where they want him. You know, they, they don't want, the owners don't want the big three staring up the pot, pot and but they actually can't because you're 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 taking the NBA's talent, old talent, 
and you're trying to make something of it. And he he's trying to you know he's trying to cut in and get some old, get owners to back him. Uh, that big three is running thin right now, mm -hmm. so he's just trying to generate some uh, some pub talk, some some pubs and chatter. I think it's it would be good. So remember a couple weeks ago, I said I think the big three should take over the three v three. Uh, no, they they should, definitely they, should. They, there's a lane for that. They and if he can get some kind of partnership with the NBA, you talking about the big three should take over for an American three o three. Yeah, I said that they should. They should. Have you be seen working. how shitty the big three is, don't you? I'm not saying the big three is great. I, I, I said by doing that, it's going to legitimize the big three more. They're going to be less reliant on trying to sell these crowds that they're not quite getting to the extent that you would hope and the TV contracts that you would like to get. So, like, it's one of those where he's going to have to sell, like, somebody in the NBA has to have also, like, a like vision and say, we can do this and it can be a benefit to everything, right? Or even just uh, American it's basketball. It's shitty for the NBA to put their money next to it. The NBA making yeah. too much money. You're know, you, you making money. NBA got nothing but to lose by doing this. Mm, mm. So why would they align themselves with him? We the max, VIPs in the back. I'm saying because then they can you get... You see how much money they just got from Amazon? No, no, but then it's them being able to control... Like, they don't need control. They like why control something we don't need. Why I don't need because, to control ants that's walking around outside. It's, it's like a, it's like a it's like an acquisition. It's like you know these programmers trying to build a program and they want you, one of these you, big companies. I, I know and to they buy it acquire over. things that are good or that like hey you know what I see they have vision it's actually yeah. move. This shit ain't don't have no vision in this. But there's anymore. there's times where the where the actual the website isn't there, but the but the intellectual property of the idea and no, then being the able idea to that great. I patent that idea. This right. idea ain't great. So, so the NBA know this idea. We don't need this idea. We just I think sold it's the right time. We just sold a few games to Amazon for <laughs> 10, uh, 10 billion dollars. Why the hell we need this shitty ass link? Here's the thing. They buy it, they control it, they let it run its course. There's no Ice need to Cube. control. But then but then you restructure it, you become the support component to like fielding good 3v3 teams because it's going to be an Olympic sport. And in Europe, it seems to be pretty popular. I'm not saying it's like massively popular, but it has a little popularism in it and it and it does draw its crowd. Now, if you have high quality 3v3 that is not trying to be anything bigger than what it's meant to be and you control that and you're the feeder system for it, then you got all these, man, you got gold medalists. You, say, you, say you control it and you send the gold medalists under your control. NBA sends the gold medalists under their control. They win the 3v3 championships. That's... And they don't care about that. The Lion does not concern themselves with the opinion of sheep, Jared. <laughs> and the big three is not even sheep. I would love to see the big three do this, though, because I don't want to see it on the, on the current path it's on. You know what I'm saying? I want to see it. The reason why it's on the current path is because it's shitty. Yeah, Nobody it's wants bad. to watch it. We don't know how long three, th real three basketball are going to last in the Olympics, right. it was pretty entertaining you know though. People, people were. It's somewhat. It is entertaining, and it might last. Because the but way the they play, three, yeah. the Ice Cube three on three is not gonna last, man. Because oh, yeah. his whole version is like, I need names, I need big names. I, look, there's really no coaching you could do in three on three. He got these big name coaches, and it's like has beens, of course. I mean, they're not has beens, but they're old statesmen in the games. Nancy Lieberman, Michael Cooper. Stephen Jack, Stephen Jackson. His whole idea was to take these old has -beens. They don't have to play full court. They play them three on three. But then they started doing, if you watch the shit, Jerry, it's 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 not entertaining, man. They they starting to do gadget stuff. That's how you know it's bad when you start doing gadget stuff like four point shots, uh, review plays, one on one review. If you challenge a call, it's a one on one review. Michael just, Rappaport yeah. standing on the sideline or in the court getting cursed out and then the problem is the old guys don't have it no more so then the young guys all the young guys that play basketball jared that can still really and are good they're trying to get to the nba they're either yeah. going to play in a legit league overseas so they can at least get paid or in the g league or somewhere where they could get noticed and maybe make it to the league they're not in that so he's getting these athletic guys that look like they probably flunked out of school they probably played hoop somewhere for northeast swag savannah state and they were they had they 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 were probably hanging around the ineligible brothers down at the intramural thing and they keep trying to fight every time i turn on every time they turn on there's always like a fight about to happen in the big three it's packed don't know how to act the nba is not going to line themselves up with this shit 
I want to Aaron's get off my lawn moments. Get off my yeah, lawn. That's what, they shouldn't. That's what he's trying to do. He's, yeah. he's trying to. He's get. trying to do it. And the NBA don't want nothing to do with them. And there's a reason why, Jared. Why? No, Jared, could you come up with this idea and you ain't watched this shit this year? <laughs> and, I, and that's I why I said it a long this, time. That's why I'm get off my lawn where it's going because I'm one of those people that you know me. If I'm gonna talk shit about it, I gotta watch it. So I'll watch it. This shit is not good, man. The Olympic sports entertaining. Big three is not entertaining. Yeah. Their whole hype is to catch people who, especially the younger generations, like Brandon talked about the millennials and the uh, generation Z who likes, who has an obsession with celeb cultures and names, mm-hmm. right? Like we know Rayon went to the big three. I'm like, why are you going to a big three? Right? Mm-hmm. That's I, need a I need to ask you all a question. Did you say, what was that kind of Not if you on that girl. Oh, <laughs> a lot of different questions. But... That, that was the second question. A flag football player named Darrell Doucette says he's a better option than quarterback Patrick Mahomes when it comes to flag football in the Olympics. And he had this to say. Because of my IQ of the game. I know he's right now the best in the league. I know he's more accurate. I know he has all these intangibles. But when it comes to flag football, I feel like I know more than him. At the end of the day, I feel like I'm better than Patrick Mahomes because of my IQ of the game. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, shout out to that dude. You got a hey, lot on your resume. All right, <laughs> tell me you tell, tell, tell me you're the head of NASA. <laughs> <laughs> tell me what the MIT, whatever you got to do to get in the room. While while I'm in the interview, as they say. <laughs> he, uh, he, he's a quarterback, huh? I want to I want him see. I want to see him throw the tr- uh, pro route trade. Oh yeah, well there there is some film on him. You got film? Uh, yeah, I got a couple clips right here. I can show you. Here we go. Yes, sir. I am here. Oh. Yeah. And so it's a double pass. It's a back pass to him, and then he throws it on a line. Man, that nigga oh, right. <laughs> ten feet, Jim. Not only that, nigga, it was a golden right rope. Here. It was a frozen this. rope. That was not a frozen rope. <laughs> that had a lot of uh, the drop on the velocity. That look like me Connor trying to throw it. I, that's his, a, look at his stride. That's he, a, he loaded up to throw 10 yards. That was a tw- yeah, that was, that was like a almost 15, that was 15, 20 yard throw. That was 20 yards. Loaded 20 up. Yard these, line. these guys in the NFL, it's a flick of the wrist <laughs> at 15 yards. I just watched, what's the dude, Wilson? Uh-huh. In the preseason, preseason game, you throw it out, they hit the man in like one second. <laughs> Now, this dude is throwing it look like that ball's in the air for 1.5 seconds. Look. <laughs> look at, but we got to be real. Oh, like he's, he's throwing <laughs> he's throwing the flag football talent. You saw motherfuckers in the NFL dropping balls for Patrick Mahomes this year. You saw people who were getting paid to do this dropping balls for Patrick Mahomes. Maybe they, maybe they need a guy like him who's more on their level mm-hmm. throwing them Patrick Mahomes darts and just not going to get it done. Well, that's why you have other receivers that are better than those guys out there catching the ball. He's <laughs> like, hey, man, like no, no. <laughs> yeah, you can get Lance from the auto parts store to come play wide receiver. <laughs> we can get Tyreek Hill, DJ Metcalf. <laughs> it don't matter where you throw it. They're going to catch it. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Yeah, that's what me, I and, told you. me and Patrick Mahomes, yeah. me and my guys that take you guys on. Come on. Uh, here's another clip of him. Doing some uh, real fine work. Hi, guys, hi. That's why. Now sit down and shut up. Oh, never mind. That's the wrong clip. <laughs> Hold on, this one. He ran and then he watched this move. He does a little bunny hop. Oh, he did with the wheel low. He dropped it low. Drop it low, drop it low. And then he yeah. backpedal into the end zone. See, it's the end zone. I don't know what the end zone lines are. Look, they go the opposite way. Look, they play the yeah, opposite no. way on the field. No, yeah, they Ooh, play, they they play bunny hop. yards wide. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know, but Brandon, I've seen yeah. like the little kids play on like flag drawn out fields, so it still look fine. These <laughs> fools, there's some adults playing on. Hey, hey man, we gonna play on the high school field. We gotta play sideways, right? <laughs> like, look at go look at Disney. Look Disney Plus. They, they show double, they look the kids play football, and they got their own field that's marked off real markings. Here's another problem. No, and this fool he taking the wrong he taking the wrong attitude. 
Taurus is. He's trying to like try to instead of taking the attitude of the kid, all he has to do is talk about, hey man, yeah, we've had some injuries out here. All you gotta do is mention one injury, and no NFL team is gonna allow. They don't allow their players to jet ski, do anything, right? They will not allow him to play this if if he just talks about the injuries. Doctor said I need a back out of me. <laughs> That's all you got to talk about is the injuries. That's all he got to say. Well, look at his move. Wink. Oh, got him. All he got to talk about the chance of tearing the ACL on turf. How tall do you think he is? You think he's five? five I'm tall five, 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 no, five, six. Yeah, five, eight, five, five seven. Eight, five, eight. I give him about five, eight. He might be five, ten. He could be like a maybe five, ten. But yeah, I used to do that back in my prime. Um, I think there's one other clip of him playing. Oh, they playing on real grass. Oh, look at, look at, look at. Exactly. Look. NFL is not going to let people play doing that. <laughs> he They're did not going to let not one player play. They ain't not going to ruin their money. He shows some toughness in this play. Look at this. Takes a hit. Dollar contract. Bounces off. Jukes. Spin a Rooney on one hand in a full circle. Confuses the defenders and is gone. You know what he's talking about? What league is he playing? playing? Hit him. I well, think he's he playing he high level, high level uh, four. I don't player. know if he's playing high level, man. Look at that grass, man. Yeah. That grass is poppy as hell. Could you see anybody else in the league doing that? Come on now. Yeah, man. No, really because it's real field. football. Somebody go put put a hat on you. <laughs> yeah, they they rented that field after the high school football game. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They had to wait till the JV game, the freshman game was played before they could get hold of the field. That's it's part like, of the Wednesday night. It looked like they played this this field looked like it's in Haiti. Tell me. He didn't just say that. I think if he was like this play also is pretty good. Now they're on the real field. This is the first time they're on the real field. Come on, man. Come Wait on. Minute, where's the line of scrimmage? <laughs> no, he threw no, a lateral. No, he threw, he a, threw lateral. a lateral backwards. He, it didn't look like it. He yeah, threw it backwards. Been, they said it they were backwards. reviewing it, but I, I think it was lateral. When he threw it, it. it looked like it went backwards. Uh, maybe not for that angle. It don't look no, like it. That angle no, don't look no, like it. No, that was no. only for it. You see what this, guy, this says? Timu Kaepernick got to chill. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just about to read Come that. on. <laughs> you know, I think if he was smarter, he would be like, it would be tight to work with some NFL players. I have a lot of knowledge on, like, notes of the game, things that you could take advantage of that you don't consider in, 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 in NFL football or tackle football that, you know, would be really good. And, you know, I would, you know, open it up that – He's open for a competition against them because he thinks he can bring a lot, but also like as somebody has, that could be an advisor or somebody that can, you know, be a player they carry as a gadget guy who knows the game and can, you know, draw things up from. I don't know if he has all that in him, but anyways, he seems like he got a little swag. He'd be doing the bunny hop, a little two step over here doing a little Australian break dancing. Man, one of these times that ain't gonna work. He go that'll be into his his career in, in trucking. He did a spin move where he put his hand out and ran in a circle, so it didn't count as a spin move, but it was like a spin move, and the other players was like, what the fuck is he doing? Oh, my goodness. And then he was gone. <laughs> when other dudes were like, man, I got to go to work after this. I can't. It's like, bro, this, you're doing too much, bro. You, like, you really, you, this is your world right now. You're really doing your thing. I get it. You know, so, I, I man, yeah. It's like, the, it's like the one dude at the pickup game taking it real serious. You're like, all right, yeah. I don't know. If I need to be doing this right now, you you got it, big dog. You got it. Yeah, no, that's the one where you say, yeah, I'm making a business slash work week decision. Well, NFL news. Trey Lance was auditioning to be a backup quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys and completely shit the bed. He showed flashes, but was still shitting the bed. He threw five interceptions to guys who will be getting notes in their locker in two days. What do you guys think about Trey Lance? <laughs> he threw five interceptions of guys that's going to be tracing that dude for his flag. And that's the time to take advantage in the flag football league. It's like, hey, before all the NFL cuts, bro, let's get these games in. <laughs> Pal be out there. Hey, man, let's get these games in for these NFL cuts. I'm trying to get my playing time. <laughs> Shout out to Lito P. Pal, <laughs> Pal yeah, he will play the league. playing time that. stolen by some, by by some Dominicans. Dom- by some Dominicans working on an oil well. <laughs> they don't season, man. Damn, they took my position. <laughs> Shout out to Lito P. Come on our show. Um, do you think the Cowboys got the best of the deal for sending a fourth round pick for their former number two or three overall pick? I mean, they had Ben DiNucci. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it worse? Mm. Is it? Yeah. Is he, I don't think he's worse than Ben DiNucci. <laughs> ben DiNucci was, was pretty bad. <laughs> right. Now, at least Trey Lance, you can run the wishbone. You don't have to have it, though. 
Yeah. Like you could you could just have him run the ball. He's been in your system for two years. And that's the best. It's also show your bad development. Yeah. They revisited the trade that the Niners made to make the draft pick of Trey Lance in 2021. Now that they, was worse. They traded, I think, three first round picks to move up and take that position, right? Mm-hmm. And those picks turned into the Dolphins trading for Bradley Chubb, Tyreek Hill, and Jalen Waddell. They drafted so, Jalen Waddell, yeah. Yeah. They traded one of the picks to Kansas City for Tyreek Hill. And then they traded for uh, Bradley Chubb. They basically, you know, came away with three high impact players. And this is one of those things that you talk about with the Niners like, could their window be closing faster than they think? Because they, they've blown a lot of drafts because they've right. missed some high oh, yeah. value picks, but they're really good at building a roster from, you know, the middle and back end of the draft as it is. They are. Well, let's get to Cutty Corner shout outs. She's biracial, girl. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're biracial, girl. <laughs> uh, Cutty Corner shout outs. Cutty Corner shout outs. Cutty Corner shout outs is a segment we end the show on where everyone gets a chance to rant, complain, or highlight something positive in the world. Cutty Corner shout outs. Cutty Corner shout outs. It's time, it's time. <laughs> Aaron, do you have a Cutty Corner shout out? Oh, I did. I just found it last minute. Well, I got one that I'll probably be sharing with Pedro later, but I'll start with this one. Um, my Cutty Corner shout out goes out to the princess of Norway. Uh, her name is Martha Louise. Uh, she's like 51. She's actually pretty good looking, right? And I want you to put it on the screen, Jared. Princess of Norway. Just put that in. Put that in. Share your screen. Put oh, that I think, in. I, I think I'm out of season. Yeah, season. Brandon, know where I'm going at with this. Yeah, yeah. So the Princess of Norway, you know, you know, it's one of those people. It's like the Prince of England. You're still, I, I actually, you know, been to Norway. It's a good country. It's lovely. Um, people are nice. And, you know, so the Prince of Norway, they're like ambassadors, right? And so she's set to get married. And, you know, you think the Princess of Norway would marry someone that, you know, uh, someone you know, someone that comes from who knows, just just some kind of good stock, I should say. But let's just say this princess of Norway, she's marrying a black man. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I was like, oh, oh, well, she's progressive. She's marrying a black man. I see something wrong with it. Because- if you start reading about <laughs> this dude, then you would know this ain't no black man. Uh-huh. This is a what Pedro she marrying. A biracial. It's a no, nice nigga. Thank you. <laughs> Most naysayer you can get. <laughs> this nigga. dude is from Oakland, right? Claims he's a shaman. Claims he's a third generation shaman. Oh, so third sound generation like he might be a, shaman. Sound like he might be a necromancer. <laughs> his own mom came out and said that we have no shamans in us. He has lied about the race of his mom several oh. times. He has pursued his mom and sister talking about they don't want me to be happy and are spread, spreading false things about me <laughs> and slandering me. This dude's been not arrested because, you know, you know, arrested means, you know, I could be speeding and the cop could just be an asshole and take me to jail talking about I wasn't wearing my seatbelt correctly. This fool been in prison. He a man. In prison. She is still the princess of Norway set to be the queen of Norway. She is all set. And this fool is just, she is married. This dude is a straight necromancer slash naysayer slash everything, dude. His name, I don't want to say his name because he's the type that might sue me. Well, he's from Oakland. You got to be careful. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Excuse me. Uh, his name is uh, Shaman Durek Durek Verrett. <laughs> I don't know what he's saying. This dude, this dude, you know what? That's not his real name, by the way. Just when we thought, just when we thought <laughs> Pimpin is dead, this dude brought it back. Because there is no way she should be anywhere near a guy like this. This messed up the whole game. No black dude gonna be able to get with the Norwegian woman ever again after this. Right. You said, and this dude like is you. ruining. You're like, how are they ever uh, in the same room together? Exactly. <laughs> That's a great question. I can't believe Paul allowed this. <laughs> he he his practice involved purging bad energy and releasing toxins. Oh no. 
He's one of them. My mama made us go to a social security building and play retarded. Mm, okay. It's just all bad, man. This guy, I'm telling you, guy, you read stuff on him. The dude's been in jail. He he was in a he was married before, married to like a woman that was like Portuguese or something. And and there was a sham marriage, so she could get a green card, but but she had to sue him. She had to divorce him and sue him. She t- she put going being sent back to her country <laughs> ahead of she said he is trying to take advantage and, and embezzle and do all this all this crazy stuff with her. He's been in jail for other things. I mean, I'm telling you, you gotta read. I can't even read up on all the shit. Pedro, does he suffer from that uh, degenerative equatorial uh, proximal disease that many uh... <laughs> Yeah, he he's he's probably just he's probably suffering from Nigerian disease. Where oh my God. he's trying to scam <laughs> beautiful white woman. I mean, he's already this, scammed her. This, ah, is, man. Yeah, this is a hundred percent scam. I, I don't. And it has nothing to do with the equator. I think it's just it's Nigerian blood. You were looking for a nigga, <laughs> nigga here now. Come on, I just has to do with Nigerian blood. <laughs> oh my God, he's so All right. stupid. All right, so Aaron, let's say, let's say you meet a princess, the, the or let's say you meet the queen of Norway. Uh-huh. And you might have you might embellish your resume a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I'm not nothing wrong with that. And now you said, and your sister try to call you out in the media. Is she hating or not hating? Uh, uh, she's hating. Can't you see? Can't you say we trying to come up right now? <laughs> she's hating, but if 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 my, put like this, Brandon, she would be hating because uh, let's say I just embellish a little bit. But if I come out and say all this other shit, lying about my family and where I lived and all that, and they hate, I I can't get back. At my yeah. Well, there's also a difference of you being like putting them in the public light with your lies versus it being lies that are contained to whatever like work or community environment that you know you might take part in. This is like you know, I guess a little more public. So the media will then inquire and then they start getting asked questions. And are they just to lie and just go along with the lie and on public comment? And you say no comment, I keep moving. Yeah, that that's true, but since that's where we gotta learn how to like, you know, saying support our bullshitters. You know, it's like just say no comment. Don't even don't speak bad of each other. Just let them let them hustle their way to the top. Right. Let each other hustle to the you top. Know, if you if you I mean if you need a reference for an apartment or a job, oh yeah, I was Jared's supervisor. <laughs> no, he didn't want to try to get me to stop smoking weed. <laughs> Stand up guy. Yeah, see. <laughs> uh Pedro, do you have a cutty corner shout out? Yeah, um, I have to, uh, first one goes out to uh, the Kia boys. I don't know. Should I give this to Kia or the Kia boys? Oh, no. Y'all collectively get, get this cutting quarter shot out. I, I believe it's okay. the Kia days. It, it, yeah, the Kia days. <laughs> Kia days is getting this cutting quarter shot out. Kia for you making a car that uh, is based on 1985 technology that you can easily steal. Um, and then the Kia boys for wanting to steal a 1985 technology car so you can do a who ride and a who bang in it. It, it, it calmed down for a minute. It calmed down for a minute. Not too many Kia boys because they know the recall was going on, but then they found out a lot of people out here ain't doing the safety recalls or the protocols. And so the Kia boys was back at it, you know, still in Hyundai, still in, uh, souls still in uh elantras or whatever else they got their hands on doing doing their crimes in it going to see some holes whatever they was doing with it but people need their cars to get to work you idiots people need their cars and a lot of those with like green you know the older ladies car my neighbor got her car stolen they stole her black kia soul 2017 the same night they broke into my mother's car for the second time. Wait, 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 it was a Kia too? Yeah, my mom's car was a Kia Soul. And the, the car that they stole, it was a Kia, same, same, same model, just three three uh model years newer. Yeah, this is a really nice time because Pedro is very calm and given a very reasonable yeah, description last, of the let, internal issues. Last didn't week, heard it last Sunday. Uh, yeah, when it actually week, happened, Pedro was quite a bit more animated. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I calm down. <laughs> Seven days of the right there, man. Well, uh, well, part of it is because uh, my second part, uh, I want to say rest in peace. I think this is where Aaron was going. 
to yeah. um, our connection. This is how me and Aaron met. My um, my homeboy when I moved to the neighborhood back in '87. Um, the great Billy Jack Clark passed away this Friday, and and if it wasn't for Billy Jack Clark, I wouldn't have met. Technically, none of you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy Jack Clark was the gateway into the second part of my family. But my family was so broken. I, I was my mother was coming off the divorce. My brother and sisters that went their own way. You know, we had a small family. We moved in that neighborhood from bouncing other neighborhoods. You know, back and forth, running from my nigga ass father. The nigga ain't got no sex. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. being, you know, being out in the streets and my mom didn't have no direction. So, uh, you know, we moved to the neighborhood, Front Street, uh, the the famous neighborhood that was in the riots, the famous neighborhoods that uh, Nipsey Hussle grew up in. Um, that's where I met uh, Aaron. That's where I met my old boy Chio. That's why I met um, Shamise. It's a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of connection because uh, our great fan, Billy Clark, um, he leaves behind, I believe, five children. Uh, I just want everybody on the podcast, you know, have a minute, your prayers and thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, he's the nucleus to, you know, like I said, we had a broken, I came from a broken family. He was, he was, he welcomed me. But all the chaos that was going on at that time, you know, we were some crack babies, you know, that crack era. And he was welcoming me. And we, you know, we had the whole neighborhood just just being kids, just having fun. Really. Not not even really being, you know, Billy didn't turn into his, you know, gang life until he got older. Yeah. Um, we was just being we were just kids. It's the reason why I fell in love with football. You know, we played b-ball together. It was, it was just we played everything. He would be he video would bring, games. Uh, video games. It'll be one weekend. Yeah. He'll be calling everybody. Hey, Pedro, Aaron, let's go. We playing. We playing baseball at the Catholic Church. Right. We'll go to. We'll, we'll play baseball the whole Saturday or Sunday. That's then right. the next weekend we gonna play football. And then next thing you know, he'll we're playing football at the middle school, which meant we were playing tackle. <laughs> yeah. Which meant we were playing tackle. We're hop all. You'll see. 10 of us hopping a gate to go play football. Sometimes play three on three tackle football. And then it'll be, hey, hey, uh, bring that, hey, man, let's, let's, let's all meet up in my house and play video games. Mm -hmm. And we'll be at uh, Pedro house, we'll be at Billy house playing video games all night. He was one of the original members of the Nintendo club I started. Yeah. One of the original members, me, Pedro, Billy, Rob, his brother, Robert. And then mm -hmm. the next thing you know, we'll be done with playing video games. Billy, let's go in the front yard and run dives over the bush. Exactly. <laughs> that's where one person will hand off to the other and there's other person on the other side of the bush and you dive over like you dive for the end zone the other person was diving to hit you trying to stop you we are basically running goal line goal we're running line goal line, line dives is we're running goal next up <laughs> <laughs> running goal line drills yeah Billy Clark, he, he brokered the deal where I traded Mike Tyson punch out for Pedro Super Mario Brothers and that's how we met. Billy was like, no, no, man. You never played Super Mario Brothers, Aaron? No, he, he got a game. He got it. He got it. Brokered the Billy brokered yeah. the deal, and then we just ended up kicking it. Yeah, that's where I was going next with the Nintendo Club. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just, it's, we out of time. I'm, I want to tell everybody on the podcast, uh, y'all a little younger, but, you know, make sure you're taking care of your health, you know. Yeah. Make sure you're taking care, you're taking your medicine. Try not to drink too much. Try not to smoke too much. Um, I, I don't know. We don't know the cause of his death, but uh, from what I hear, um, you know, he, he went to sleep. So just check on your health. Yeah. Uh, when you turn 40, you know, yeah. turning 40, you turn in that corner. You gotta make sure you're getting your prostate check. You're getting your, yeah. you're getting your colon cancer. Any test that the that the doctors give you, do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I matter of fact, when I get back, that's that's where I'm going to do my colonoscopy. <laughs> when I get back from this, uh, let's get back from this trip. But yeah, man, it's he he was to connect yeah. to 
you know, the second part of my, you know, my, uh, or shit, my teenage, like, my growing up, seeing yeah. everything. Yeah, he was the connect. He's the reason. You know, was, that I have so I have so many extended families. It, it was because of Billy Jack Clark. Yep, he was my first friend. I met him at four when his mom asked my mom, could, could they walk home from school together? Or can you pick him up? Because she was a single mom. My mom said, she told her no. She told her no. She said, I felt bad telling her no, but she had a baby in her hand. I, mean, I knew her oldest daughter was like a teenager and had a kid, and she was holding that baby. And then the little boy, Robert, was walking between her legs. And I said, if I say yes, there ain't no way I'm going to say no to these little babies, too. So I got to say no now. <laughs> it didn't It didn't change our friendship. It didn't change my mom and her mom being able to talk and be cool. It didn't change none of that. And me and Billy ended up being in the same kindergarten class. We hit it off. We were always like the tall dudes, played a lot of sports. We had dreams of, of being being pro athletes. I kept grow he kept growing, I didn't. <laughs> but then he, you know, he got caught up game banging, but never in a real crazy way. But he was a rolling 60. And like he always say, he always said, you know, you know, the, the saying goes, you know, you 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 might be still a game banger, but you no longer bang it. You know, he had his job, he had his kids. He he was playing semi professional football at the age of forty. Exactly. <laughs> he was yeah. That's that's his thing. His love was sports. Uh, he he was joked about the old school music, man. We didn't. We we joke. Me and Billy would joke on Facebook about all this trash that's out now. And we're going back, going back to the old school. We bring up old Ram albums fan. and everything. Big time Ram fans. Stayed Ram fans. Me and him stayed Ram fans. We were big Ram fans. First Thank phone number fan. I ever got. First phone number I ever had. Still remember by heart. I won't say the area code, but it was seven five nine zero two seven one. Thank you, Pedro. Well put. Now, also for Pedro uh, taking a shit on your wife don't count as a colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that come from? I don't know. You a sick bastard. I just thought when you said it, I thought that's yeah, what he think. Uh, yeah, if, if the doctor want to put his fingers up your booty, let him do it. Yeah, <laughs> I think Pedro gonna take all kind of butt play, man. I did a colonoscopy. Me and Joy had it on our anniversary. Come on, <laughs> it was in a good mood. I don't. Come on, now. You know good and well if I'm gonna do something crazy, it ain't gonna be with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Taco Pablo. TP. Do you have a Cutty Corner shout out? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I'm just going to say anybody who's out there buying chicken wings at restaurants can fleece right now. Um, <laughs> so I'm out <laughs> with the girls. I'm like, I'm going to take the kids out for the day. Nicole stays back or whatever. And so we out like we want to get lunch. So I'm Googling like they like, what do you guys want to eat? Oh, we want chicken nuggets and fries like every other <laughs> kid or whatever so i was like all right cool so we show up in this sort of like uh i don't know like pub brewery type situation you know like every restaurant looks down with the wood tables in the middle <laughs> yeah essentially, essentially you you've been there essentially mm -hmm. so i was like oh man i see i see the table a couple tables away oh man they got chicken wings okay cool i knew what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get these chicken wings so i look at the menu right and see like okay chicken wings and it's like it's like fifteen ninety nine. I was like, okay. So me being the uh, responsible adult I am, I asked the server, "How many wings come with that fifteen ninety nine? He's like about seven or eight. And I was like, God damn! Mm -hmm. <laughs> when when did we get to, when did we get the two dollars wing? <laughs> Brandon, I, I, just, I, I don't want to interrupt too much, but I'm starting to notice a pattern of there's uh, these economic times that's hitting North Carolina real, real hard. slow. But no, no, real hard up. with these fifteen dollar wings now, sixty five dollar <laughs> haircuts. It's just like, man, this is something's going on in North Carolina. Dude, man, I was like, <laughs> did two dollars. Wait, we talking about a regular size wing, Brandon? Or yes, we're not even the we're whole wing, dude. If I'm about a drumhead or a flat, if, I, if I'm paying two dollars a wing, these motherfuckers need to be. Mm -hmm. Need to be should have been in the same fucking uh, investigation at Balco with Barry Bonds. Okay, I need these motherfuckers big. <laughs> Tell them, okay? Brandon. Tell them. <laughs> By drum, me, I'm, I'm talking about a chicken leg. Okay. Tell them, preach. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Brandon. I I totally agree. I totally agree. I'm tired of these uh, wing gouging uh, practices by these restaurants. 
you know, not only the distributors, you know, the supply and demand got affected, but that, that is what it is. But these restaurants are charging over, yeah, $15 for seven wings, six wings sometimes. Right. I'm like, ah, 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 that better get my dick hard. <laughs> and the thing about chicken wings is it's volume food. When's the last time you said, oh, man, I went crazy last night. I had three chicken wings. No, I had <laughs> some chicken wings. <laughs> I didn't count. <laughs> but now you make me count. It's, and it's not it's not a number that you're like, oh, once I have like three of those or two of those, like I'm totally done. I, just, I can't eat anymore. Like sometimes you, you go eat a whole plate. Sometimes you sweat one or two and you're good. It's a very, it's very, yeah. It's yeah. very visual. Yeah. I think I can eat that plate of chicken wings. Yeah. And a lot of times oh, you can eat like more than less. <laughs> I don't ever finish a plate of chicken wings and be like, damn, man, that was too many wings on there. Except for that one time in New York where they were selling 10 set wings and I ordered 30 of them. And I was like, oh, Lord, this is no, this is way too wait, much. Wait, 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 were they 10 cent or were they less? I guess they weren't. Was they it were five? Cent, I think they were 10, 10 cent. cent wings. And then here's 30 the wings for $3. He ordered 30. I played it small. I only got like 15. But then we saw the sign that says you will pay for any wings. You have to pay for any wings left over. And we were like, yeah. what? So, so. And we already ate lunch. We had a big lunch before that. We only ordered the wings because we were watching the national, one of the worst national championship games ever in college. Shout out UCon- UConn versus Butler, was it? <laughs> Shout out UConn Butler. Uh, the score, I, don't think, I don't think any, either team scored 60 points. It was one of the worst. We didn't Timber. finish it. It was so bad we didn't finish the game. And we were sitting there struggling to eat those damn wings, man. Ed ordered 30 something. We all sitting there struggling. Jared started hiding them, throwing them in a napkin on the floor. I was taking bites of them and then putting them <laughs> and wrapping them in napkins. I'm like, hey man, I took a bite of it. So I because they were so cheap, they were 10 cents. So we ordered and we're struggling. My dumb ass ordered a side to go with it. That's what messed me up. Right. And so we're struggling. And then we get to the end. We're like, I'm sorry, man. We got to pay for these, right? Because we didn't finish them. She's like, Oh no, you ain't got to pay for any wings you don't finish on your plate. That's just you. You got to pay more because it said any wing you don't pay is like a dollar twenty five. That's oh, right. that's if you try to take it to go. The ten cent wing. That mm-hmm. they're like, you want to leave it on the plate? You can leave it. You pay for it. You can leave it. You just can't take it to go. Oh yeah. That's see, we didn't know that. See, we didn't know that to after we already trying to force this wing down about to throw up chicken wings. Yeah, that was a lot of wings that day. I got about to twelve, and it was like that was enough wings. I think about anywhere from like once you get started in the ten to twelve range for me. Yeah, I'm like, okay, I'm done for wings for today. Like, but, I was about to throw up when I hit when I hit like eight. I was about to throw up. I was like, I can't do it, man. I can we do gotta... eight to ten easy, like just like that. I could do. That I if totally I get. I totally get the chicken wing thing, man. Like grocery store getting a little. Uh... Crazy. Get a little pricey too. All right. You try to catch some more safe. You try to catch Safeway on Fridays. They'll have them a dollar off a pound. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it's not, they don't fit in the $5 Safeway. It's just a dollar off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 they, the grocery store is getting now. Uh, my secret wing spot, this, this other grocery store actually makes some good wings, but they're pricey too. And I'm like, okay, man, I had to, I had to slow down on that. So I got to pay for gas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, man. But yeah, it's it's insane. Number one, they fleeced us by cutting the wing in half and throwing two rings. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> agree. Charge <laughs> right. That is creeping up the price. Like, oh, you want these chicken wings, huh? Okay, cool. No, like, and the crazy thing is, seven, eight chicken wings, $16. A chicken sandwich, which you think the chicken breast or chicken thigh would be way more valuable. No, that shit's $17. I'm like, what? And it, and it came with fries. <laughs> like, the economics of this don't make any sense. Yeah, your appetizer shouldn't cost as much or it shouldn't be so close unless it's like a really great appetizer, like a really big. It's like, man, that's basically a meal. It shouldn't be costing it's damn near the same as your uh, some of your main main dishes, or entrees. Anyway, man, so we need to, the only way we do it is th- together, okay? We can't just be praying these outrageous prices. You have, you have a, you have all of us in solidarity over this wing <laughs> issue, Brandon. So you let us know, you organize, mobilize. What did, what did, what did Killer Mike say? Just do that for the wing thing and you got us, we'll be there. Now, if, now, if Kamala does, does not meet my demands, she does not have my vote. Come on. Come on. Well, uh, um, my Cuddy Corner shout out goes out to to smugglers trying to smuggle 
raccoon fruit. <laughs> Meth and amphetamines disguised as coon fruit. And uh, it's worse looking watermelon. It there. just, oh, you know, it doesn't, it looks like a big baggie that has, it, yeah. <laughs> like the, the ga- you know, you have the sandwich bags that have different designs on them to look like different things. That's like what they did. They got like a, a two gallon size sandwich <laughs> bag that's supposed to look like watermelon pattern on it from Target. And uh, they stuffed it with methamphetamines. And now, just to, to let you know that they had that crates full of these, and they didn't have the tape over the middle of them. No, the tape, that, that's that's after they've been processed, I think, by the government. But yeah, they just they they look they don't even look like real watermelons. I'm just like I'm sorry. That's man, it looks like you got a disease. Some of your watermelons is diseased. Did let's, let's further inspect. Um, <laughs> these fucking yeah, Ebola watermelons. But also, how dare they sell you the good name of watermelons by trying to sneak methamphetamines? <laughs> they, are, they are causing a, you know, black people typically haven't been associated with meth. It's more of a crazy cracker thing, right? And 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 now, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're going, people, the racist people out there are going to think something racist about black people and meth now. And that's, that's even a connotation that we don't want to take part in. So... Uh, stop doing bad smuggling jobs. Uh, what, what, what did y'all think about it? Did y'all think that uh, they could have come up with a better fruit or something to smuggle it in other than a well, goddamn they, coon fruit? They need, no, they need to hire Aaron to do the watermelon. He could get you make it look like a real watermelon. Like he's like, hey, that ain't gonna work. Just <laughs> this is how I look. This is how it's supposed to be. Exactly. And another thing, Brandon, man, what's the one thing? You've driven the you've driven to other states and back to California, am I right, Brandon? And Pedro, yeah. you have too, many times. Different borders, parts of California. What's the one thing they ask you at the checkpoint? The only thing California ever asks you. Do you have any fruits or vegetables? That's all they ask. Long as if long as you that's all they ask. They don't ask you anything else. Do you have yeah. any fruits or vegetables? Yeah. These fools keep- trying to sneak meth in a watermelon <laughs> to California. That's the one thing that they check for is fruits and vegetables. Now that's what they I ask. Don't see. I, I kind of want to see. Don't be Mexican is the first part of this yeah. question. <laughs> you want to see them all in a pallet together in a box? But I want to. What I want to know. What? 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 All right, Michael yeah, Bay, Jordan, Jordan. 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 <laughs> this is what I need, Ed, because Jerry yeah. will kill a joke. Ed was yeah. good at trying to stop Jerry from killing jokes forever. What is I, it? I, I almost think this was a joke anyway. Because what is it now, Jerry? I got California it. checks for fruit. Any no. drug, drug pusher would know that. Uh, uh, they're making an AG3 biopic. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan is auditioning for the role, and he's doing the scene where AG3 was approached by the cartels to be their coon fruit smuggling expert. I'll hit y'all later. The coon fruit counterfeit. All right, Pedro. <laughs> what would Mike we Jordan do? That's it. Now look here. We all know that the light watermelons ain't as good as the dark watermelons. The starters. And if you end up rolling through one of these checkpoints, you got you got you got a brother working at the checkpoint. He gonna want to get one of them watermelons. He gonna be tapping them. He gonna be smacking it. He gonna be looking for B spots. He's gonna hear the hollowness. He gonna do everything. He gonna caress the watermelon as if he's caressing a woman. That, Cause that's what I would do. That's what I do every time I pick up my. I once got the police called on me the way I was for molesting a watermelon. And I told them all I'm doing is trying to get the best one. So I told him, I, I, look, I said, look, don't arrest me, Mr. Police Officer. I'm about to go inside Berkeley Bowl and take about 12 of these off their hands. <laughs> all right, thank you, Michael B. Jordan. Shout out to Michael B. Jordan. Ah, shit. This is the best role I ever had. I'd rather play this role before I play a biopic on Michael Jordan's son. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan's only believable sex scene is going to Be
Gronk. As we're heading into the NFL season, what are you feeling most optimistic about with your Cleveland Browns? And what is the one red light that's still blinking for you where you're like, well, I'm not optimistic about nothing. Uh, I've been seeing, we haven't just seen Deshaun Watson and talking about his arms still sore. You should have kept him holes massaging them. If that, if that what makes you feel good, you do it. Okay? <laughs> just keep it to a minimum. You don't need 60 girls. You need like 20. You don't need to switch it up. Get you a solid 10 to 15 girls to work on your arm and work on your nutsack. Okay? No, you nasty. Just be nasty. Get out on that field. Man, I'm, not, I'm not optimistic about it. I complained about this the other day. Too. He looked bad the other day, last year. He looked bad. It wasn't just that. He looked bad. Yeah, I, I, I talked about this uh, uh, earlier with Aaron. I didn't trust. Like, I know they're playing all backups. So you're playing, like, you know, your vanilla defense. But the guys out there look like they didn't didn't like they didn't didn't train they looked like they were smoking cigarettes all all season <laughs> they had a backup running back for seattle mush one of the safeties and the safety was bigger than him <laughs> on that 52 yard run uh up the hole and that hole was so big no penetration so if they if they don't if not playing if they gotta play the backups if anybody gets hurt they're in trouble yeah so i i, I don't see them i don't even see they're not making the playoffs Three, I, then I'm three, I feel like you don't have that many backups out there. Well, it, 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 that's what I'm saying. They they look bad. Mm. They look they did they, they look like they were not in the strength room. Mm. And they got bullied. Um the secondary uh we, we haven't seen Denzel Ward. Is that what is his name? So Denzel Ward? I, oh, yeah, no, other news. Denzel Ward uh, was diagnosed concussion. with his concussion. fifth concussion of his career. Yeah, yeah. Fifth known concussion, they would say, of yeah, his he, career. He can't stay healthy, so uh, I don't know, man. They need to go another direction. Yeah, Denzel Ward with five concussions, that's pretty much like retirement. That's got to yeah, be retirement. Yeah, that's, he should be retired at that point. Yeah. You can't get that many and, and keep playing, Is especially if they're known. Did he I know. get a concussion by playing football or accidentally poking himself with eyeliner? <laughs> Damn. Uh, Damn. You know, I did not read that story, so I can't really say what it was. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I have heard rumor. Uh, you stupid. <laughs>